It all started when I got a DM from Greg Crozier, world champion cyclist. Listen, would you like to come with me next week to jump out of a Hercules C-130 over the pyramids? I would planned to go to the gym next week, but on the other hand, like on my channel, we learn and experiment in all areas. I mean, I can't just go, woohoo, we're doing a vlog where I jump into a crazy place, you know? I need a challenge. It's a challenge, all right. The upside down position is the one everyone wants to master. It takes between 400 and 500 jumps to fly upside down properly. So quite naturally, and with a great deal of modesty, I remind him that I'm Mr. PNP and that I don't need the wind or the training to do that. We're off to the Corbus area, where we board the first plane to show him what I'm made of. It does indeed look harder than expected. Challenge accepted. Can a beginner parachutist learn in less than a week? Does the wind tunnel help? And how does it feel to jump over the pyramids of Giza? I don't know, but as usual, we'll find out together. Welcome to Practice Makes Perfect. And so we find ourselves in Aix and Province for an intensive week of wind tunnel training with the aim of achieving that famous upside down figure. My coach is already here. The wind tunnel is a free fall simulator that allows you to experience the sensation of flight without having to take a plane, which makes it a surefire alternative for becoming a parachutist. Its operation is very simple. You've got four giant fans sucking air upwards thanks to an air recirculation system, which gives a stable, super powerful wind to lift you into the air. You did the briefing, right? Yes, but we don't have much time left. Am I late? 20 minutes. A bit. <laughs> So, we're gonna get changed because we're late and waiting for the first free flight initiation. It's supposed to accelerate the progress because when you normally skydive, you get 50 seconds of free fall, whereas here you do two sessions for half an hour. So, you get a lot more flying time and you really get better at skydiving much more quickly. This is the first time in my life that I'm gonna do this. Now it is time to subscribe, because if my parachute doesn't open when I am in Egypt, I will lose my channel to another subscriber. I know I wasn't speaking, I pretended. Let's attack! And of course, since I'm so late, I've been given a tutu to wear, and without being briefed at all, I find myself being tossed straight into... what is called the Lion's Den. <laughs> He missed the briefing and was late. Well, I wasn't doing much better with the briefing. In this case, he was late. If you don't get the briefing done, over there you're thrown into the lion's den. And he had to figure it out, but he knows his studios. <laughs> but he's extremely focused, and I don't doubt him. I almost died. I didn't understand them. Even though it looked fine, it was not fine. Everyone looked at me like, shit, shit, he's not doing what he should be doing at all. Another round? Yes, you'll do the full session there. What's the full session? It's 30 minutes, now go ahead, it's your turn. I don't even have time to blink now that a session lasts 30 minutes. I'm already back in hell doing more laps. I'm so unhappy about being late today. You don't realize the slightest bit of pressure can send you crashing into the glass. You don't have this sensation in the air, so you don't know what you're doing. The slightest bit of deviation will send you into the glass. <laughs> it's really hot in here. It's his first time in the wind tunnel. And he's not bad. It doesn't look like it, but he's not bad. That's it, buddy. You're coming along. That's sweet, Charlie. But no, it's a long way from happening. Whilst I'm trying to get a little more comfortable, I'd like to introduce the masters of the air, Craig and Karen. We're free fly world champions. It's an artistic discipline of sport parachuting. We basically dance in the sky. Where we create art. Can you show us what it looks like? Yes. Yeah, they dance in the sky. But I guess they're not too bad at tunneling either. The crazy objective was why not try to fly head down, which is the ultimate trick. Everyone who learns to free fly tries to master the head down trick. The people who have mastered it and can do it at will will have said the amount of jumps it takes is between 300 and 500, and we're going to start working in the wind tunnel between the 15th and 20th day. To recap, I've never flown in a wind tunnel. And now we're going to try to learn what classic students normally do in five days. Yeah, you aren't a challenge, buddy. Well, here you go then. 
In fact, on a classic high leap progression, you normally validate each of the four modules step by step. Don't worry, if you're gonna test it at high fly, we're not gonna turn your head upside just yet. Normally, you learn to master the belly position, then do the same thing on your back. And once that is validated, you attack the sitting position. Then if, and only if, you're comfortable and manage to validate all of the figures, you'll be allowed to move on to the final, aka upside down. But we don't have much time before leaving for Egypt, so we will have to take a few shortcuts. We create our own system of progression. We try to do everything on the first day, including head down so that we can sleep on it and say to ourselves, okay, we've already seen everything on the first day. It wasn't easy, head up or head down. It was more of an initiation than actually validating it. At least we get to see it. After quickly making me understand the physics of the wind tunnel by trying to walk forward like a big moron, I realize that it's ultra counterintuitive. To go forward, you have to put your body weight backwards and to go backwards, you have to lean forward. First of all, that's weird. But following this introduction, the first position we see as you learn to parachute is the belly flat. This is the basic position of the first module. And in itself, there is nothing very complicated for a skydiver if the objective is to remain motionless in the middle of the tube. Well, unfortunately for me, our goal is not to stay still in the middle of the tube. In fact, within seconds, I realized that Greg isn't just testing me on the position itself, but on my ability to move in 3D in the same position. This means being able to move in all four directions, forwards, backwards, and to the right, or to the left. That's not all. We're in the air and also have to add up and down, as if being comfortable in four directions wasn't enough. In short, even if this is the position in which I feel most at ease, it's far from one, and before mastering it in all six directions at 100%, and roughly at the second module, we have to move onto the back. I really like this one in the PMP program. The back position is quite pleasant. It's super comfortable, but in the wind tunnel, it's a different kettle of fish. Everything becomes more complicated because it is the opposite of the belly position, which is the opposite of everything you're used to doing on land. In short, you lose your bearings completely. The third module, that is still unknown to the public, is called the head up, aka the seated position. However, we've added a real level of difficulty. As far as the back position goes, I've never done it before. In fact, I don't know if we realize it on video, but it's extremely hard to maintain the same position as Greg. As you can see, you need to push your chest forward, but your buttocks above your hips and your feet out pushing forward, which was already an unnatural practical combo. But to top it all off, once you're flying, you've gotta be super stable with your pelvis because that's what makes it go forward, backward, or turn. So not only is the position difficult, on top of that, a single degree of pelvis orientation in any of these four directions moves everything. Sheesh. And to finish off, as that wasn't hard enough, we'll move on to the fourth module, which is the objective of this PMP, ladies and gentlemen, the head down. Good thing about this position is that I don't even have to explain to you what a mess it is. What a mess! You figure it out and I'll figure it out for you. Anyway, we'll talk about it later, but right now it's time for the debrief. I told myself I'll get through it, parachute and all, but I can't. But the thing is, in the air, you don't realize that you're off by a meter yeah, or two. Yeah, that's the difference. Greg, we're crying. Will you cry with us? Cry? Why? <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> He's a fish in the water. It's a lot of time spent on the machine, too. How many hours? 2,500. So it's 3,000 next month. 3,000 hours, plus 9,500 jumps and counting. Yes. It's going to be a lot more complicated than expected. I feel like a baby learning to walk. The airflow is vertical and very strong. This is what we are going to do naturally if we want to move forward. We're going to put the body first. You can do it here. You have to do it the other way around. That's horrible. Everything's reversed, and when everything is reversed, that is just the beginning. Right now, I feel like a disaster. No, no, you're fine. Lower than zero. Less than zero. <laughs> <laughs> it's very fast. Got it? We'll be shifting up a gear. You're athletes now, so we're moving forward. You're the athlete. I'm just a YouTuber. We're moving very fast here. If we went a little bit slower, it would be a lot easier. The good thing is we've seen all four postures. In other words, it's nothing new. Greg, in 10 days, we're gonna do the face down over the Egyptian pyramids. How long is the training? What's the session like? I don't even know how long I've been here. You've already done the max workout. We'll be doing 40 minutes a day. You're going to do a 10 minute session four times a day, then sessions of two to three minutes and five two minute sessions. Okay. That's 40 minutes a day. In fact, we're going to repeat this all the time. We can do a little upside down all the time. Some so upside down. So we've already down. done half of the session today? We've done everything that we were meant to for the week. Okay, I'll see you in an hour. 
A little clarification. As if 40 minutes a day not touching the ground wasn't enough to further optimize progress, I have two other coaches who will be joining the program. So here's the real list of this week's training schedule. Basically, in five days, I'm going to get the best out of everyone, aiming for a total of six hours and mixing different learning methods. We'll be doing four with Greg, where we'll be doing the bulk of the four modules, taking shortcuts to get to the upside down as quickly as possible. One with an iFly instructor, where you will follow a much more academic progression and insist on all little details that make it so. And finally, one with Elliot, where we'll try to master the boost-ups. So in other words, creating a little visual choreography with six hours of flying. <laughs> this is what one would normally achieve with about six months of training, except that we have five days. Is that good for you? I'm very late. We're starting the second 20 minute session and here the aim is just to beat the basic positions to get comfortable with them. Let's go. Second session done, and I am getting my ass kicked. What's up? I'm exhausted. Uh, I want to teleport over there, on the TV. Ah, uh, no, no, there's time. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so much harder you're when good. you're just starting out. Like, you pulled me like a ballerina. I thought you were playing around. <laughs> I was like, am he I made mob you or something? <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> He's making me do these tricks. I can't even hold my position. When something goes wrong and there's an imbalance, you close up. It's quite natural with these sports. If you want to prevent a fall or hop, you have to roll, then cut. It's your experience as an athlete and a stuntman that's loosening you up at the moment, but you'll need it later. The next time I fall off my snowboard, I'm gonna open up just like this <laughs> and bend your spine. <laughs> Good, let's look at the first day overall. The stomach position is fine, but I'm not too comfortable when asked to transition or move around a bit. As for the sitting position, it's progressing a little. Where you go from not succeeding at all, to holding it all together, to start fluttering about quietly, even if it unlocks your joints. On the other hand, the back and down position, it's a catastrophe. We're off for a good night's sleep in the Yakuza, which is available to rent in anyone interested. It's in the description. We'll meet again to raise the stakes. Did I tell you that this video was sponsored by Geisfein? Geisfein is an Austrian company offering a whole range of garments made from merino wool. And now, if you're wondering, what on earth is merino wool? It's this brother's wool that's world renowned for being ultra soft, extremely breathable and thermoregulated. So that in other words, the fabric retains heat. One, gray quality. Two, there is no smell. Three, it regulates temperature naturally. At first I didn't understand until I put on their hiking barrel that's right up there. It keeps your own body heat inside the fabric. So you're always warm. Who cares if you wear socks? And I'm a bit of a chimp. It just feels good. It just feels good to be here and put these on like slippers. And there, my friend, we must feel good in real life. Wow. It is. So nice. Really? <laughs> Not the best move for the ad because I got them super dirty, but the fact that I got them super dirty means that I wore them super well. And now I've been rolling with it for a whole week. At first I had a bit of trouble with the shape. It's weird, but it allows all your toes to use the space. They're called barefoot shoes, so shoes to go barefoot in. In case anyone wants to try merino wool, follow the link in the description. So whether you're looking for hiking boots, airy sneakers, or even barefoot shoes, you get 50% off the whole store with the code Tristan. So don't hesitate. Thank you all. The advantage of parking right out front and spending the night there is that if you want to be late, you have to do it. If you want to be late, then whoops. So let's put this on. Our aim is to improve on what we saw yesterday. And as usual, we're putting on the little guys fine barefoot shoes. You don't even need socks as it has merino wool in it. A small cookie prepared by the Madame Buddhis. And we're off. Greg is in here, so I have got another instructor. And now we'll work on back and sitting. I am so, so unhappy with my progress. We made some progress in the positions yesterday. I was trying to catch on, to see a click and all. In this case, I think I did about uh, 10 minutes. We worked on the sitting position. He tried to show me what the back position is and how to hold it. I was flying backwards soon after that, but because he placed me and I didn't move, then it stuck. But I couldn't figure out how I held it together. I don't like it when I succeed in something without understanding how I even did it. I hit my head uh, once or twice, I scared myself a little. You see, there's a session where progress is made and you feel it and it feels good. There are sessions when you feel like it's pointless and this is exactly that feeling. 
It's super hard. In fact, you don't realize it, but the fact is that it changes all your points of reference, that everything's reversed. The human body isn't designed to understand. As you know, I'm very hard on myself, and now I'm demotivated. We'll try to stay positive. Every time there's a hard moment in practice, then I have a bad time, uh, but that means victory will be all that sweeter. If there is a victory, we're gonna have to pull our fingers out twice as much. So Francis, come on. On the very last run, he actually had me stand on my back and realize that if I in fact tilt my feet like this or like that, it made me move like this or like that. And if you really want to take a tour of yourself, you just have to put your foot out and then it all makes sense. But just when you're in, I swear there's too much information that I can't really assimilate. Sometimes it's clear and sometimes it's not. He looks at me and tells me, mm -mm, and I don't exactly know that mm -mm means like try your leg or break the pelvis or do something like this with your feet. I love it with regard to the PMP. At the same time, we are in a slightly tricky phase where I don't really understand any of it. And you know the drill, practice makes perfect. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. 10 a.m., I totally missed my wake-up call. Not a morning person. They just knocked on the Yakuza's door saying, Tristan, you're flying in 12 minutes, okay? I just got up and I think I'm flying with Elliot, who is a wind tunnel boss. I think this is the video where I'm gonna be the most disheveled. I'm always late. It's not at all what I'm expecting. Hi, man. <laughs> so we are going to fly you up to 13 meters high. <laughs> in fact, let's go inside and I'll take you upstairs. Uh, you'll be It'll be long. fun. Exactly. Beyond being a great wake-up call, Elliot is above all ex-champion who trains the French wind tunnel team, so it's not bad either. We're almost on the same level. Almost. And then the goal will be to teach you how to manage your sink rate, be able to accelerate or slow down your descent. You can do it yourself, and if all goes well, maybe we'll be able to add a few little flips and barrels as well. He wasn't kidding when he said he would wake me up. I don't have a microphone, but if I did, you'd hear me. Now we're working on what we call boost, which means going up and down simply by understanding and playing with the lift. Basically, the more you round your back and straighten your legs, the more air you'll have in contact with your body, the higher you'll go. Or conversely, the more you'll push your pelvis down and take off your legs, the less lift you'll have. So the lower you'll go and the faster you'll go from one side to the other. The feeling of fetching high is crazy. It's more talk than talk. Yeah. You know, the back sitting is hard at first. Well, this is fun. This is so easy. I feel that it comes much more easily, do you see? More in control. Next, we'll try to do some front flips a little bit. Is it there? Yeah, you're going to do it by going up. On the way up? Yes, you'll get a hop a little okay. bit like that. Although I'm usually not too bad at front flips, in the tunnel it's a completely different story. But little by little, after a few scares, it's starting to happen. I'll let you do it like a pro. You're on your own now. I'm ready to go in anyway, okay? You try to keep it clean, stay in the center of the wind tunnel, and lie flat. Compared to yesterday's big slump, I really feel better about this session. It's a bit like the reward between the big bouncing sessions with Greg, and even though I've come close to smashing into the glass two or three times, in real life it's progressing. Are you debriefing this session? So good. In truth, it was great you figured out how to go up and down really quickly. Of course, stability is still a work in progress, but the feeling you get with the wind is something that takes time. Not serious enough. More technical. <laughs> Tomorrow's goal is to make it even cleaner so that you can do more front flips without me. Then we'll try to push your exits and entrances. That works well. You did Thank great. Thank you so much. Compared to your expectations and objectives, do you want to know how it'll turn out? It'll be great. As I said this morning, I drew up a program at home. It was finished in two sessions. After that, you have to try and improvise to find new things to do. Now you can see that he's someone who's done a lot of sport. The more you do, the easier it is to learn the control. It's good. After 30 minutes of fun and a few minutes of break, it's already time to go back to the real rooms. I don't know if you realize how hard it is. We worked on the back position here. Just standing still on your back is hard. You feel like you're doing nothing. Yes. Like you're letting yourself go. But not everything has to be just right. The hand here or the hand here makes all the difference. The angle here or here makes all the difference. Now imagine doing oh, yeah. that. 
back to the basics of express training with instructor Greg. He makes me do a lot of things I don't understand or know how to master, but at some point you have to take your brain apart and accept this is just pure PMP. It's hard, we really don't realize it, and it's beating the hell out of my shoulder just to hold the chair pose there. It took me three days. Basically, your knee is like this. Ugh. Don't move the hip if you do that. You'll go into the wall. Oh my, ouch. You see, it makes a sort of click sound. In six days, I'm supposed to be on top of the Egyptian pyramids and jump off, brother. Yeah. <laughs> it's the plane. At this yeah. point in the video, I'd like to say it's uh, dead. Yes. Now, it's dead, dead, dead. I'd love to see the people watching this video teleport into the wind tunnel, just to get a feel for how difficult this experience really is. I didn't understand the back position. Every time they tell me to stretch out my legs or bend them, I don't really get it. My neurons don't understand. Sitting down is much better. We're making real progress because I was doing this. What sport? Did you see my look of despair? <laughs> At one point I was like, come on, this is too hard. You're trying to get back on your feet, but it's impossible. I promise we'll add bricks as soon as we can and you'll be out of there in no time. That's nice, but I don't feel like a... Uh... Go on. Okay. I'll tell you if you have time, but okay. you're still currently on the road. Very good. Have a good rest. Sheesh. How are you? I'm telling you guys, this is so complex. As soon as things go wrong, you have the human reflex to say, getting back on my feet. But if you do, it's gonna get worse. That's when I think he started placing me backwards to get the head down view. Basically, that's what the video is all about right now. We need to shift our focus. Oh yeah? <laughs> In terms of feeling, I get the impression that I'll hit a wall. Oh yes. The idea is to be aligned and try to spread your legs with a straight pelvis, but it's something. Tell me, how's it the feeling? The head down position is still a bit confusing. And also, are you still at that point? Well, or are you starting look, to get your bearings? I don't understand anything. When you switch during the transition, you have to forget. From then on, it's very robotic in my head. It's one, arms, two, legs, three, head, four, shoulders, boom, boom, boom. Once I get the hang of it. Okay, but like I said, I don't get the fact that at any moment my body goes forward and I don't know why or at any moment my legs move. And that's what I don't understand. Normally, someone who's just starting out and is ultra sporty and well wired between day 15 and day 20, he'll start to go upside down. We're on day three. That just shows you how far you've come. That's so difficult. Yeah. We've got crazy timing. With Egypt, we're trying to do something, and if we don't succeed, we can't blame ourselves. It was already unexpected. Can you confirm that it's also a sport of balance, a sliding sport? It is. Like I climbed the highest climbing wall in the world, and it was hard, but it can be done if you have the money. My word. So after a good night's rest, we attack this fourth day at dawn, along with the 30 minutes of a boost up for breakfast. You see, the objective is simple. Successfully perform a mini choreography consisting of an entry and exit. Boost up as fast as possible with controlled stops as close to the net as possible, all with as much fluidity as possible. So for zooming out, it's the fun side of things. Between the real progression exercises with Greg, here he allows me to release a little pressure and try new things while improving the feeling of my body in the air. So even though I'm having fun, we still work on our feeling in the air and that is all good. And little by little, it is starting to get a bit better. I manage to get up and down relatively quickly, whether I'm on my stomach or back, I can do a few twists and spins without too much difficulty. I'm trying to control the flip better and better. In short, it's looking up. So here's the famous final race. Come on! <laughs> so incredible. Frankly, you've progressed really well. It's great, you look like a real skydiver. It's great, you can be extremely proud of yourself. I was doing it like this, look. <laughs> Ooh la la, look at me. <laughs> I think you've really got it. Let's go and have some fun. I had fun on my back, and I think that when we go back to the basics with Greg, it's gonna help me. What a pleasure. I validate you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay, Thank my you. man. Thank you. It, was it really a was a great pleasure working with you on this crash test. It's it truly good. was. <laughs> Time for lunch. 
After a well-deserved lunch break, I meet up with Karen, who corrects me on a few technical points, but above all, how to fly without putting too much pressure on my shoulder, because those who have been following the channel since the beginning know that I'm starting to feel a lot of pain down there, and believe me, forcing your shoulder against the wind at 200 kilometers an hour in this position doesn't really help the body at all. It's the second session, and it's funny, because the progression isn't linear. There are highs and there are lows. This is the moment when things are going well. In fact, having fun this morning relaxes me. It's a pleasure. So now we're gonna tackle the hard part with Greg, and I think it's gonna kick my ass. It's stylish, because while well, having played with Elliot this morning, it made me feel really comfortable on my back. Like he said, come on up, down, easy, tech, tech. I haven't moved on my back yet. Forwards and backwards is a bit hard. In any case, overall, comfort is a process. Then something clicked. Practice makes perfect. A little click in general, yeah except on the head below. Bravo, I don't know if you can tell from the screen, but it requires a surgical position. In addition to losing your bearings, you have to remember to align your head, the torso, and pelvis while stretching the legs at the right angle without giving too much shin. Otherwise, you take on too much wind and without giving too little. Otherwise, you have no lift and you crash, all the while thinking of stretching out your arms in front of you without forgetting to pull the head and shoulders back. In short, it's a huge mess. And what's more, as if that weren't enough, we're flying upside down. The wind is almost at 100% power. So if you make the mistake of flipping over on your belly like that, if nobody caught it, you will hit the ceiling at 250 kilometers. Stop having that death reflex. The head down, super, because you understood the pelvis, super proud. The head, the arms, it was great. But on the other hand, the fact that you want to turn is the second time you've done that. To so get uh, down on your stomach, you must get down on your stomach. I see. Well, you'll be in Egypt before us, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! For me, it's interesting to see that because of your willingness to follow, it really is a phenomenal time saver. It's just a matter of doing one module before another. Even though it's more advanced, it requires super management skills. And if it's more advanced, that doesn't mean it's untouchable. If it's done beforehand, it can also provide you with keys. Head down. On the other hand, as you say, transitions are so difficult. I don't understand. So difficult. You gave me a hard time with your space there. You're mighty big. In fact, you're better at headshotting, and here you were able to do it right from the start, your chest was open. <laughs> the big 85 kilo baby. That's the price you pay for getting it so fast. That's great. A big machine. You impressed me at every session. I'm done. Ciao. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Too early. Much too early. We're gonna take it easy. Prep the shoulders. Because if you don't, you can dislocate them in midair. Today we flew 100 minutes, exactly 60 plus 40. Well, we're gonna progress a little more in a pediological way. According to the real IBA classification, normal people who come for a first flight do 10 minutes out of 40 minutes a day. No beginners do that. So here, 100 minutes today to end the week. Ugh. Guys, I am all broken up for this video and look, you don't even subscribe. Not very nice. Okay, thank you to the real subscribers then. The rest, we're about to get our asses kicked. Before Egypt, we do the penultimate one hour session with Flav, the instructor of iFly, who's coming to validate everything I've learned so far and estimate my level in relation to the real academic classifications. In short, we have to take an hour to test my level in all these skills, and it's no big deal. We have made some good progress this week. In just five days, we'll officially be able to validate over 35 different skills from an academic point of view. And even without talking about it, I'm feeling extremely more at ease in the air, whether in the stomach, back, or sitting position, or even upside down. I think that compared to the starting point, the progression obvious. Objectively speaking, how's the progression? Insane. Frankly, it's great. We're going to take about six hours to see a whole range of things that no one can normally see at that time. And you've basically made key points at each stage in your shortcut. Whereas a 530 student won't necessarily start with his head down. At the academic high fly level, you'd be ready to start upside down because you stand in strong wind. To start upside down if you have to go on your back and be able to hold yourself at the same power you see upside down. And you are at 100% now. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. What level? Two? Three? Level three plus. Uh, see that face? <laughs> it says it all. Guys, I am aching all over and I'm very tired. And now I have a two hour break. I'm gonna go sleep for a good hour and a half nonstop. I'd rather sleep than eat, but I've barely eaten. My darling, I told her everything I didn't like about cereals and everything. 
and she still found a way to make the most nutritious cereal bar. It's great in taste and too good in ingredients that you can eat every day without ruining your health like all those other disgusting bars full of stuff that you don't want. They're really so good. It's just too good. You must try them. Just bite into it so we hear the yep. crunch. It's a crunchy marshmallow. Listen here. Mm, oh, wow. Basically, the first time my girl gave them to me, she marked them as Boo Krispies, you know, because Boo is like, babe, you know? I have already it. tasted them. They're incredible, but the joke. <laughs> mm. Oh, man. That's a dose of love. Feel free to type Boo Krispies in the comments. Mm. I swear, I'll create a Shopify and make Mrs. Buddha's work. We'll make thousands of them. Mm. Oh, so man, it's incredible. It was originally a joke, but I warmed up to the idea and finished the Shopify of Boo Krispies, so I'm honored and pleased to announce that it's official and that many of them are available with the Second Link subscription. It's made by Madame Denise with love in her little lionese kitchen with three main ingredients, Krispies, sugar, and lots of love. It's got a real American taste that you can find in France. Nutritionally speaking, it's the perfect pre-workout combo, so if you're interested, click the link in the description. You won't see these, but tell them we're killing ourselves for these videos. Oh, uh, really? I just lay there and smiled, as if it were a movie. <laughs> I'm happy. We don't sleep enough. In an hour and a half, we'll be awake. Now it is airplane mode, so ciao! <laughs> Shall we? Those are the real eyes, but my body's so heavy. My shoulders and everything. Ugh. This is the last session. It's hard to believe that this is the end of almost six hours of training over five days. The last 20 minutes are here. I can't believe this. Does the practice makes perfect concept appeal to you? If you see that we're investing time, energy, and money in it, that's because we really are. If you want to support us, all you have to do is give us a thumbs up or subscribe if you haven't already. It helps the channel. It's free. It's a pleasure. Then you can buy the books as well. Anyway, thanks for everything. We love you. Let's go. So we set off on the last session, working with our heads down, starting at the net, then progressing to a transition from the head down position. It's slow, yeah. The transition from normal to head down is really easy. And as soon as you're on top, even upside down, is getting better. We're on the verge of losing all our bearings. And you find yourself like this. And I swear it's not natural at all. Your brain is at its highest and lowest. <sighs> It's already so unnatural to be upside down in a glass tube. Projecting air at 250 kilometers an hour. Can you just imagine how that feels? Well, now let's imagine the feeling of flying five upside down. Right now, I clearly feel like I've entered a sect of aliens who've mastered gravity. So tell me, as a student, what is my strong point and That's what's my very weakness? I'd say question. the strong point is the mental side. This is extremely important in any sport. You have a fighter mentality, you right. try to analyze, you watch your videos carefully, you try to understand your movements and stuff. And yeah, the weak point is uh, how muscular you are. You can have this tendency to lock in and prevent yourself from feeling the wind a little. And you still need a little feeling. That's the tricky part. You'll be disgusted because your strong point is also your weak point. <laughs> it's the hairstyle. <laughs> 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 In fact, it's hyper-physical, and lots of people have different physiques. You're physical, and on top of that, because you wanted to develop hyper-handsome, mm -hmm, that's a disadvantage because when you're in a bad position, you're validating yourself with even more muscles, so you can resist longer than other people. It's tiring. So then sometimes, because of that, yeah, you get tired. Yeah, that's what's yes. so annoying. It is. And the line between sheathing and tensing is a very yeah, difficult that is one. that's true. Practice makes perfect. La la la! That was the best ending ever! Yeah. <laughs> I love it! That was great! <laughs> Thank you! <laughs> this is the end to day five. Intense course of wind tunnel, and basically the guys told me that I flew as much in five days as a normal person flies in five months. I have a muscle and a joint fatigue that I've never felt before. You see, when you fly sitting down, for example, your knee is like that, and you have to open it. Your knee is not made to go there. Since I'm heavy and can't fly, they put a lot of wind in my back. Right now, I feel that in my arms, wrists, and ankles. Ah! Otherwise, technically, all the joints are good in principle. You know, I do a lot of sports and everything. I'm always trying to work out, doing push-ups, pull-ups, and squats to keep in shape during the weeks of filming and all, but that's impossible. I'm drained. In any case, we're happy we've mastered all four positions. If I had to mark them out of 10, I'd say that I mastered the flat eight out of 10. I'm having fun following Greg between the guys, and it's not perfect either. I don't want to crash. I can fly flat with people. I know how to back up. I know how to turn. I know how to stagger and all that. Seven out of 10, especially going up and down too well. 
well. Left, right, orientation, and so on are a little complex, but overall, it's fine. I'm getting the hang of it, so I'd say six days I'm getting there. It's not that I'm holding on more than others, but I'm still not really able to maintain my pelvis, which means I'm not gonna go too far forward or too far back, and I can do some turns by myself, but it's not too much. <laughs> As for the last position, head down. Frankly, I've got it down to two out of 10, a little more. I don't know if I have the level to manage myself upside down above the pyramids. On the other hand, I wonder if I'm going out and I position myself and then they think that there is a trick to it. From what I know, adjustments need to be made between the wind tunnel and the air. It's not exactly the same thing, but we've still got six jumps over the pyramids in Egypt. There was no way I could manage to get my head down. And then over the last 20 minutes, Greg showed me the transition from head up to head down. And in fact, it's much easier to make this transition than to start from the head down position. So in reality, it's just one big misunderstanding on my part. I'm resting for a few days, and for your part, I suggest we meet again before leaving for Egypt, shall we? So after a busy week of training, we rent out our parachutes to friends. That's all we've got in the suitcase, and we're off on our first flight to Cairo to join the Jump Black Pharaoh event which takes place just once a year and gives around 100 skydivers the chance to experience the thrill. We've got five scheduled, and the sixth is the one where we'll be leaving with the whole team to try and validate the head down. There's a real atmosphere, which I hadn't planned in my head. I never thought I'd feel this way. We're in no. these parts and feel how powerful it is. So in the meantime, Charles and I gear up and prepare to make our very first jump. We're at a military base. We don't belong here. We're dressed This is so incredible. We're going to get into a Hercules C-130 plane that goes 250 kilometers an hour. It's so true, we have nothing to do here. <laughs> I won't lie. The feeling of getting on a plane at my level is both incredible and extremely terrifying. We don't belong here! <laughs> We're basically bad guys. I made videos in my bedroom, and today we're gonna jump out of an Egyptian army plane over the pyramids at an altitude of 4,500 meters. I'm in disbelief. At some point, the system went haywire. The average jump of the brutes around me is about 700. So even though I have nearly 70 jumps under my belt in the world of skydiving, Charles, we're clearly babies. One, I've never jumped out of a plane this big. Two, never with so many people. And three, never with the camera. So this is a first for me in many ways. But even though I'm scared and there's a little imposter syndrome that's trying to show its face when the plane door opens, I force myself to put that fear aside. I unplug the brain and mentally prepare myself for my first jump. Woohoo! Can you see my face? I've got tears in my eyes. Beautiful. At an altitude of 1,000 meters. It took a while for my parachute to open, and I was really scared. Ah! <laughs> if you come back on a dromedary, it's a disgrace. Uh, there's only one dromedary, and that's Buddy. <laughs> Who is a dromedary? <laughs> we made the first jump. It's the favorite jump of my life in terms of feel. Achievements, boxes that I ticked in my head, like feeling so, so grateful. It's marked there. When I opened the parachute, I shouted like, damn, it's so good to be alive. I hope you all experience this kind of moment. It costs money, it's an investment. Honestly, if you don't use your money to experiment with stuff like this, what's the point of killing yourself to win? Once the apprehension is passed, we continue in the same vein. Skydiving is one of the few sports I've tried that stole my heart from the very first seconds, and I don't think it's hard to understand why. First of all, the sport itself is totally insane because you're throwing yourself out of a plane at an altitude of over 4,000 meters. It's the best and the worst feeling in the world. But on top of that, the further along you get in the discipline, the more you gradually put fear aside and end up keeping only the positive emotions and the lessons of the sport. And from the preparation of your equipment to your free fall itself, or landing, believe me, this sport makes you work harder than you think. For example, in everyday life, I may be ultra headstrong. Don't worry, you'll soon understand for yourself that when you pack your parachute or your gear, you're not allowed any careless mistakes. Otherwise, same goes for free falling. I don't normally do badly with my body in any sport, but don't worry, it'll put you in your place when you realize that you'll never finish progressing given the difficulty and time it takes to get comfortable in the air. 
The same goes for the sous-voile, when you're slapped in the face with humility and breathtaking views every time the parachute opens. So now, I'll let you imagine what happens when you get a chance to do a trick with your world champion coaches in this kind of conditions, and on top of that, you're lucky enough to be able to say that it's your job. Yeah. It's crazy, just crazy. Anyway, thanks again to everyone who makes this possible, and let's go to the last jump prep in an attempt to complete the final objective of this PMP, to maintain a head down jump with barely 70 jumps to my credit. We'll see if this intensive safety week has served its purpose, which I know it has, but now it's time to try and put it into the air. That's another chance. I set off with Greg, and just like in the wind tunnel, I concentrate on all the points that make the difference in being able to hold a position for as long as possible. One, arms, two, legs, three, head, four, shoulders, boom, boom, boom. And if I manage to hold it for about 10 seconds, we'll open the circle to Karen, who will come and help me to fly three headed down. So that's the theory. And to see what it looks like in practice, and because a picture is worth more than a thousand words, I'll leave you with this magnificent imagery. Enjoy! Oh my word! I shat myself! Ah! Uh, I just shit myself! Thank you! So much! Thank you, Lord! Thank you, universe! Thank you, life! Ah! Uh, so fucking grateful! Guys, I feel... I'm so scared, but I feel so alive! Heaven is crazy! Look straight ahead, look at all the sails! Oh my word! It's fucking beautiful! I want to cry! <laughs> oh, Tristan, bravo! <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah! So oh, yeah. cool! You just did it! Well done! Thanks, bro. Thanks. I landed in the right place and all. <laughs> Bravo, Too man. Too cool. <laughs> Thank you. I'm beat. Well done, man. Well, coaches, you see, the goal in my head was to succeed on my own, and I lasted about two seconds. It's normal because you don't actually have a reference. That's all we do, train students all the time. And if you want the feeling of the three hands, then look, we never know because We've got you on a string. People who have never done it oh, will yes. say it's required. And in fairness, it's hard in to explain. Not at all, go. Because with the upside down, the hardest part is holding your pelvis. We're holding you here. So you see, we don't have any influence. Clearly for us, the gamble paid off. You'll see me in the video yes. saying, yay, I'll see shaking too. my head well in all directions. <laughs> because to be honest, I don't think you would be able to hold that. I'll see too. Hmm. So it's a huge plus. You managed to hold it for a few seconds without immediately going limp. It's great. If the coach is approved, well it's done. Crazy. You know. great. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Congratulations so to much. this machine. Initially, I was a sports coach on a scholarship, making videos in his room. And now we've just jumped out of an Egyptian AC-130 above the pyramids of Giza. And I shed a tear after my first jump, just after opening the parachute. It's beautiful here. <laughs> well, another box to tick. <laughs> I'm clearly not going to be a world champion skydiver, but at least we still learned to experiment in a completely crazy field. Ladies and gentlemen, goodbye.